everyone and welcome to this week's episode of You Asked For It, where I answer your questions about watercolor, art, and anything else you may be curious about. As I'm sure you've already seen from the thumbnail, this week we will be dealing with water control with watercolor. So this, I have to admit, is probably one of the most asked questions that I get on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. Pretty much everywhere I see this question. Now, before I answer that question, I'm gonna ask you a question. And here's the question. So where is the water? When talking about water control, this question can sound a little bit trivial and dumb. I mean, where is the water? But it's actually a very important question. You need to be constantly asking yourself, where is the water? Is it in my brush? Is it on my palette? Is it in my paint? And is it on my paper? By figuring out where your water is, it actually will help you control your water usage better. Now that we have that covered, how do we prevent too much water? Whenever I encounter this question, it's usually dealing with the fact that there's too much water, not too little. So I'm gonna just target in on that for this episode. If you guys want me to talk about too less water, go ahead and leave a comment below, but I have a feeling that it's just too much. So how do we prevent too much water? Well, there are a couple suggestions that I can give you that are really easy to fix this right away. The first thing is you wanna make sure you have a good palette one that has a flat surface that won't leave you with pools of water in certain locations. You also want to make sure you have a rather large mixing area. Some palettes, they will have the paint area, but they won't have a very large mixing area, and that is not going to help you with water control. So if you have that type of palette, don't feel like you have to go buy a new one. You can just go get a plate and use the plate, as long as it's flat, you can use the plate as your mixing surface to help control that water control. Second, I always say have some sort of towel or paper towel or something, even a sponge to dry your stuff off with readily available. Now, you will be using these items to most likely dry off your brushes. You could even use it to pick up excess water on your paper and you could even use it to dry your palette if your water is too excessive there as well. All right, so those are the easy solutions to help you with water control. The next ones that I'm gonna give you are a little bit more involved, but you can still do them. They're pretty easy. You just have to play around and practice. So I'm gonna be looking at two techniques that I'm sure you've heard before, but these exercises, even though they seem basic and simple, will help you with water control. And the first one that I'm going to be looking at is wet on dry. This is one of my favorite techniques in watercolor simply because it gives you the maximum amount of control. For this technique, you leave your paper dry, slightly wet your brush, and then wet your palette's paint. It should look something like an ink consistency when you have applied it to your paper. I usually use this technique when I'm dealing with flat washes, especially in larger areas, because it gives me the most control that I can have with watercolor. So the next technique that I'm going to be talking about is wet on wet. Basically you have a wet brush with wet paper. And this is probably the one that sparks the most questions about water control. The reason is because really with this, you have no control whatsoever. It's basically the place where happy accidents happen and you're able to blend colors beautifully and mix them in ways that are just very special to watercolor that you can't do with any other paint. So this is one thing that is a strength to watercolor, but it also is one of the hardest, especially dealing with water control. Now you're probably wondering if I just said you can't really control this technique, then how are you supposed to master it? Are you always going to have to approach it with happy accidents? 
The answer to that is no. Wet n Wet is kind of like a wild stallion. You always know that that horse is wild and you can of course harness that strength but ultimately that horse is free and it's going to buck when it wants to and have a mind of its own. So you are just trying to harness basically the potential of disaster. <laughs> you're trying to harness chaos basically when you're working wet and wet in my opinion. The very first suggestion that I'm going to give you is paint with a bright light and preferably put it over you in some way. That's going to help you be able to discern the next suggestions that I'm going to be giving you and it will make your life a whole lot easier. So I highly recommend that you get a bright light. All right, the next thing that you're going to be looking for is that magical moment on your paper. Basically, by using your light, you are going to determine when your wet paper is actually ready to be painted on. You should be able to see a soft glimmer, sometimes referred to as that magical moment that I just referred to. And basically, this means the perfect moment on your paper where the paint and the wetness of the paper work beautifully together to do exactly what you want. This magical moment should look something similar to a very still, let's say, lake in the summer. It should be right on the surface of your paper and it should just glisten beautifully underneath that light. So that is kind of what you're looking for with that magical moment. All right, the next suggestion that I'm gonna give you guys is fixing the dome. What does that mean? <laughs> this is something that I've kind of learned in my own art journey and I'm gonna be sharing it with you guys today. It's kind of my little secret. I have not seen anybody else talk about this, although I'm sure it's common knowledge and they probably just have a different name for it. <laughs> but this is what I typically see when my paper is starting to warp. As you guys know, if your paper is starting to warp or to buckle, there's too much water on it. Well, by that point, it's really too late to fix it. You would either have to step back and let it dry in some way, either by blow drying it or waiting for it to dry, or you're just gonna have to start over if the warping is too much. However, I have found that as I'm painting, if I just kind of lean my head down and I look to the side of the paper with that light up above, I can tell before the paper even starts warping if the paper is loaded too heavy with water. And the way I figure that out is the water usually, it doesn't sink into the paper. Basically the paper is too full for it to sink any further down so it starts to bulge up into a dome. When I start to see that I know my paper is too oversaturated and I immediately go and get a paper towel or something, a sponge, something to slowly suck up that excess water. Sometimes I will even use a dry brush and I'll just point it right into the side and it will immediately start picking up that water. This, by doing that and picking it up quick enough, I don't have to start over. I can usually actually pull up enough water to even quicken up that glistening moment and immediately start painting. There's no waiting period anymore. Anyway, that is something for you guys to look for to help you with water control. And I hope this video helped answer that question with water control. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and all that other YouTube stuff that you guys know so well. And if you have a question that you would like me to answer, make sure to use the hashtag AskAMisfit or you can go on my Facebook page, Instagram, and ask me questions. I'm also looking there for more current questions. So anyway, I enjoyed this and I hope you did too and I will see you next time.